good morning and welcome to a new video uh today i'm in the studio for a newborn session with a little boy and the little boy is bringing his big sister who is three um i'm also going to hopefully try two new things uh well not really new new things but things i haven't done in a while uh, and i'm going to show you something fun which i'm probably not going to use today um so let's get to it because this is very um confusing so here you can see the setup for the newborn area to start with uh, we're gonna try well we're gonna start on the beanbag they've chosen blues and mint greens um, so yeah I have another outfit that I want to suggest but I just have to fix the straps because otherwise it keeps falling over um, and then here well, do you remember that I got my new Paloma shell with my new beanbag? So this is my beanbag from Dream Baby. And as you can see, it's looking pretty sad and empty. So there are hardly any beans left in this beanbag. Uh, but then I thought it could be fun as an extra decor. We just have a baby on a flocati. So here is a flocati uh, light beige. And yeah, if I just throw it on top of this beanbag, it already creates this little den for the baby to lie in uh, and i can always put some posing pillows like some little beans underneath the head uh, but he will be nice and snug in this little den and i think it looks really pretty with the flocati all around him so i have this as an extra setup um, so yeah and then i can just take my soft box and place it somewhere here on the side for example and i can easily turn this around to see how the light is the prettiest um, so yeah, this flocati I'm just going to use for the sibling photos together lying on their back. Uh, so I'm going to prep another decor right here. But yeah, my sister-in-law was just texting me last week if I was interested in some dried, um, uh, like grain. I don't know if you can see. So I think it's really pretty to decorate like a photo set. So if, for example, if I have like a wooden bowl and then have like the grain all around it. And she also has some dried lavender. I don't know. Can you see the dried lavender inside? Yeah, so that one I'm definitely going to use with a girl. Um, and maybe this one is pretty now to be used.
porn session. I did film some parts. Um, there were two kids involved, so we were <laughs> a little bit more busy with the kids than uh, adjusting the camera the whole time. Um, I thought I could share with you what I use to film. So the camera I'm talking to right now, uh, the program I use to edit my videos, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Because I've had many questions regarding this topic, uh, maybe some of you want to create little videos as well that you want to be able to put on your business page. Um, that's great because then your customers can kind of see what to expect. And I think it's great to create videos. We live in 2019. And yeah, and even if you apply for a job nowadays, they might ask you to send in a video of yourself because um, yeah, to have your CV on paper is great, but to be able to make a video and really introduce yourself and give an idea of who you are is even better. So I can imagine when, you know, mommies and daddies to be are looking around for a newborn photographer, it really appeals to them if they come to your business page and they see a video of your studio, the accessories that you have, um, just, you know, to give an idea of who you are, um, what a session looks like, you know, it creates a beautiful business card, a beautiful introduction of you and your business. You can add some nice music. I did that a few years ago already when I was still in my previous studio. I created a little clip and it just said, you know, don't dress too warm because it gets quite warm in the studio. If you want to bring a book or a laptop, that's fine. Um, there's coffee and tea. Uh, you don't have to bring any outfits for the baby. Just little snips and bits of text and then it would just show the beautiful studio, some of the backdrops I have, some of the headbands, some of the little hats. Just an overview of the whole studio area and you could see me in action. So I would, um, you know, photograph a little baby and I would pick out different, uh, you know, backdrops, whatever. And then uh, they could have an idea of what to expect. So I would say if you do decide to have a video on your business page, maybe even hire a videographer, someone to film for you. So you have beautiful, professional, non-shaky, just very clear and bright images, soft, however you like it, uh, with some beautiful audio to create a beautiful clip of what you're doing. It doesn't have to be long. I mean, it can be one minute, but beautiful. Because if you create maybe a video with your phone, um, with maybe some bad audio, it's very underexposed, it's very shaky. Uh, it might even give off the wrong signal to parents um, because then they don't get like a beautiful image of what the session will look like and how you do your work and what the studio looks like. It might come off across as a little bit unprofessional, if you know what I mean. So if you do decide to have like a video on your business page, make sure that it is something that you're really proud of, something beautiful. I do recommend the camera I'm talking to right now. It's a Canon. I'm actually a Nikon, Nikon girl. I photograph with Nikon and I'm really happy with my Nikon D750 and my Nikon 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Um, but with this camera I'm talking to right now, it's a Canon. It's a G7X Mark II. And I like it because it has this screen that can flip forward so I can see myself. So I know I'm actually recording and I'm not just talking for 10 minutes and then I come home and I realize that I didn't record. Uh, I can also see if the exposure is right as far as light, uh, if I'm not cutting off parts of my head or something like that. Um, I do set the brightness a little bit brighter than zero. I put it at plus a half or plus 0 0.75, sometimes even plus one, because I want to have this light, airy look and feel on my videos. And it will focus on my face most of the time. Sometimes it just considers the background to be more interesting than my face. But usually it will focus on my face and then make the background a little bit blurry. So it actually films with a high aperture. Or like if you want to change the focus point, you can tap the screen to change the focus point or just hold something in like the main area of the camera and then hopefully it grabs the focus. Like, I don't know if it'll show, but now I have this little boat. 
So it still wants to track my face, as you can see, but now I got the boat. So I'm kind of blurry here in the back and the boat is sharp and in focus. That's what I really like about this camera. It's really good at doing that. So here you see the camera in my dirty mirror and this is the tripod. It has three feet, it doesn't really show right now. It has three feet and my mirror is really dirty. And here you can see the flip up screen. Hello. I love the tripod because I can just attach it to anything. Uh, so when I'm filming, I'm showing the image from the top on the beanbag. I actually just twist it around my backdrop stand. Um, so that's great. It's a good tripod. And as far as editing, I use iMovie. So it's very basic. It's not like Final Cut Pro, whatever. Something cool. I just use iMovie. I drag all the clips together. Maybe I make a nice transition. Maybe I don't. Maybe I add a little bit of text. Maybe I don't. Um, I put some music underneath. It's very basic. iMovie, it's on any... It was on my MacBook already. It's very basic. Anyway, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe and leave a comment. Love to read your comments. And then um, you can see me in my next video, hopefully. So thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.